In this video I'm going to review chapter 8 which was over logarithms and this is more like flashcards so I will be pausing and you can be thinking and then I will give a brief explanation. Let's begin. In an exponential function y equals b to the x, x must be positive. That is false x does not have to be positive, x can be 0, x can be negative, x can be uh, any number, so we would say that x being the domain is all real numbers. Next, b must be a positive number, the base. That is true. In addition, b cannot equal 1. Next, y must be a positive number. In other words, whatever I put in for x is always going to produce a positive. In this case, it's true. You have an asymptote. There's no number you can put in for x that's going to create 0 or a negative. If this function, y equals a, b to the x, is growing. It's a graph of growth. Describe b. b would have to be greater than 1. If it's dec decaying, b would have to be a number in between 0 and 1. In other words, it's a fraction. Is this graph growing or decaying? The number you want to look at is the number that is the base. Again, since that's a number greater than 1, it is growing. Again, greater than 1, it's growing. You do not distribute the 1 half. You'd be violating order of operations. Even though it's a fraction, do not distribute the negative. It is decaying because that fraction is between 0 and 1. It is growing. Just because it's a fraction doesn't mean it's decaying. It has to be a fraction between 0 and 1 in order for it to be decaying. So what happens to the graph if the value of a is negative? In other words, in number 3, if 5 halves was negative, what would happen? Well, the graph would reflect over the x-axis. Let's describe the translations. There's none. Parents don't budge. That's a parent function. They don't move. This would be to the left 1. Remember, you always think the opposite for x. This would be right 3. There's no horizontal shift, but it does have a vertical shift up 4. Right 4. Right 4, down 2. left 4 up 2 again when the x when you have that x plus 4 think opposite direction you want it you might want to think go to the right but you've got to go to the left 4 and then up 2 you take the y at face value there is none parents don't budge there's no extra numbers with the x or anything behind the x. That one would be to the left 5. To the right 5 and up 2. What is an asymptote? Well an asymptote is a horizontal line that the graph approaches but never touches. Where's the asymptote here? The answer is y equals 0. Since there is no vertical lift, 
or drop. It's the x-axis, which is y equals 0. And you do have to precede your answer with the y equals since an asymptote is a line. Here it would be y equals 2. The whole graph has been moved up 2 units. This would be y equals negative 2. The horizontal shift has no, no impact on the asymptote, so the answer is still y equals negative 2. When you don't see a number beyond what you're given, it's understood to be 0. Again, that would be the x-axis. Again, even if it shifts for, or left or right, it's not going to impact the asymptote. Be careful. Things are out of order. The answer is 8. I did that just so you don't get into the habit of looking just at the second term. Percent of increase or decrease? It's a 25% increase. We start with 100% and it's gone up 25%. This one is going to be a 75% decrease. Again, you started with 1, and now it's at 25, 0.25, which means there's a 75% decrease. 45% increase. This is a decrease of 55%. This is an increase of 20%. Notice the numbers out in the front have no bearing on the increase or decrease. This would be 80% decrease. Convert it. It's equal to 1.5, which would be a 50% increase. It's about, about 0.666, so it's going to be a 33, approximately 33% decrease. Okay equal to 2. Hmm. What's the increase? Where'd you start? You started with 1. Or 100%. This is a 100% increase. You've gone from 100% to 200%. So you've increased by 100%. Approximate value of E. 2.71. The formula for compounded continuously interest. Whenever you see those words, it's A equals PE to the RT power. If you don't see those words, do not use this formula. A logarithm is the inverse of an exponential function. It represents the exponent. A common logarithm has a base of 10. Write this in exponential form. In other words, I don't want to see the word log in your answer. Answer, 2 cubed equals 8. Notice, again, you're going to raise the base, which is 2. Inverses always have a switch, so you're going to switch the 8 and the 3. And remember, a logarithm represents the exponent, so 3 is the exponent. This one would be 5 squared equals 25. 3 to the first equals 3. 7 to the 0 equals 1. Let's put the car in reverse. This time we're going to be given an exponent, and we want to write it as a logarithm. So there's going to be some switching. A logarithm represents the exponent. The exponent is 2. So we're going to drop the base and switch the 16 and the 2. Drop the base, which is 8. Switch the 1 8 and the negative 1. Drop the one half, switch. Drop the three fourths and switch. So be careful, I did do some changing. 
drop the 9 and switch. Drop the 4 and switch this 3 and 64. Okay. Did those. This one's a little bit different. What is the words that go in that blank? The financial formula used to calculate. What did we say a second ago? Compounded continuously. Log x is called a common logarithm. Use the change of base formula. Remember, your calculator doesn't does not compute anything other than base 10. That's base 3. So it's going to be log 5 over log 3. Log 9 over log 4. Condense. You only get to write the word log base 2 once. So what are we going to do with the 5 and the x? Well, since they represent exponents, when you're adding exponents, the operation going on between them is multiplication. Since we're subtracting the exponents, that's the operation going on between them is division. Another way of writing that is log m to the fourth. Again, we still have that log m to the fourth. And this time, we have that plus. Again, when you're adding exponents, you're actually multiplying the, the uh, exponents. So it's going to be a squared. You can cut and paste that 2 back over as an exponent. Just put a minus there. It doesn't change much. Again, you only get to write the word log once. It's going to be m to the fourth divided by a squared. Here's a triple e. You only get to write that once. You have a couple pluses. You have, excuse me, you have a plus and a minus. So we're going to have the 4x multiplying. Minus means divide. Okay, now we have a couple minuses. You only get to write log base 3 once. The x is positive, so it remains in the upstairs. The 4 and the y are being multiplied in the downstairs. Further explanation of that is uh, you can just you can factor out a negative, and when you do, you can see why the downstairs is 4 times y. Okay, put the car in reverse. This time you're going to expand, so we're going to write the word log base 4 several times. Since it's multiplication, we're going to add those logarithms. We have three products, r squared, a, times t cubed. So that's going to be 2 log r. Again, you take the exponent put out in the front plus log a, plus 3 log t. Log base 5r, plus log base 5a, minus 2 log base 5, 2. Okay, this is a new one. Let's take a look at this. It's the same as this. Just this. And that's about all we can do. It's the same as this. Be careful here. We're going to distribute that one half. This is now a product a to the one half times b to the one half. So we're going to put the one half out in the front and add those two together. That concludes this video.